Hey guys, Jeremy here. And my name is Pedram. And we're reviewing Resident Evil Apocalypse now. We did the last review of the first film where we basically re just re-talked about the first film and said how it's nowhere near as good as anyone remembers it being. And so we're continuing on leading up to the sixth film this time, the final chapter, and Resident Evil, yeah, the final, final, better bloody be. Uh, we watched Resident Evil Apocalypse, and it's even worse than I remember it being. It's so fucking bad, I can't, I couldn't stand it. It's kind of fun. It's, it has its moments, but, uh... It definitely had a production increase. It definitely had um, a more nods to the video game. Like definitely. Well, obviously, with the Nemesis character being in Resident Evil 2 and 3, there's actually some action sequences that are a reference to Code Veronica with the whole windows yep. bit. Um, and Nemesis looked good, but basically I just mentioned everything that was decent with this film. The rest of it is an absolute travesty. <laughs> the fact that there are so many inconsistencies mean that the production must have been a mess. Either no one cared, or they literally had such a bonehead team that no one seemed to notice all the shit they were doing. There's people who disappear out of nowhere, the story is an absolute train wreck, there are even er editing inconsistencies, like something that must have been done in post. Now, oh yeah. Yeah, at one point so, uh, we were looking through some comments um, when we watched the movie and we saw that one person points out that Jill Valentine reloads her gun twice in the same six second period. Yeah, she reloads it and then in the same conversation she's saying, oh yeah, we have to shoot them in the head and she's like re-reloading re her thing same gun. And the thing is, not only was that done with editing, but audio had to do that too. Yeah, that's true. So yeah. that's kind of like that bullet that, purpose that, oh, that purposely misses that guy in Alone in the Dark. They did that in the post. They actually like did a bullet that totally missed him, and they made him die. So that's like it's a purposeful, destructive element to your own film, and that's what you feel. This whole film, this whole, this whole mess is literally just falling in your face the whole movie, and nothing, nothing works. It feels like from the ground up, they had good intentions, as good intentions can be. Well, when you're your first-time director, Alexander Witt has never directed anything since this movie. One and only. One and only. He One was. And a, only. He's been known as a sec, a second unit DOP. So he's not even a first. I literally wonder how many people they went through before it came to him. He literally must have literally got called. Like, oh, I'm gonna do it, and then ever since then he's been drinking himself to death because he realized just how much he screwed up with this movie. This is his magnum opus. Yeah. Oh. I mean, at the end of the day, here we are, Raccoon City. Characters we recognize. We see Jill Valentine. Uh, we see members of the Ashford family, even though they're good guys now. That's the thing uh, that, that Nikolai was a character that was supposed <laughs> to be a bad guy, but you know, yeah, terribly acted, terrible Russian accent by a Canadian actor. That's something that we did find not bad, not particularly good, but interesting was that they had all these nods to characters uh, from previous games. Yet they totally did them differently. Like Jill Valentine's a badass bitch, and she was really like a nice person, just kind of stuck in a bad situation in the video, in the video game. game. Yeah. yeah, and then Ashford's are the people who have like, psycho. Yeah, psycho. In the video it, games. Yeah, like... It's uh, Jared Harris having a phone in a paycheck. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, and the action. The action is something for a film like this is necessary. At least in the first film, it was decently shot. This film has taken action movie mentality. To taken. It. To, yeah. Take taken two. Taken two where basically you have in maybe a five second interaction in a fight scene, you have over ten cuts, which does not work. It looks sloppy. You don't know what's going on. And you can t clearly tell they were doing that during the Nemesis fight scene. A guy in a huge prosthetic suit 
trying to seem as if he can like karate chop like Jackie Chan. But instead, you know in the reality, but without editing, he's just kind of uh, swinging around. Yeah. But with editing, they just like have blistering cuts, like to the point where it actually stops making sense and you have to just wait for the fight scene to end. Yeah. Pretty much. The whole time you're watching this, you're literally just watching this ball of garbage roll down a hill. I made that reference to the last review, but literally, I, I can't stand anything about this movie. I can't stand the black guy who has absolutely tasteless black stereotype Mike jokes. Epps. Yeah, Mike Epps. Wow, he's just an awful character in this film. Like, I blame the writing, yeah. mainly. I mean, he, I don't mind comic relief in this type of movie, but when all your jokes are just purely tasteless, it's like... Smash its custom. It's like, oh, I get it. He's sort of like a bro from the hood, Yo. and then all the other characters are like the video game characters. Yeah, and, so. and then the movie just even... The movie doesn't even know what it's doing at the end. No, I have no idea. Like, the fight scene between Nemesis and him, that's probably the smartest part of the whole movie, is when she has a memory of who he was, and she feels bad about that, and there's mm -hmm. that emotional connection. Where ne and then Nemesis has... Which is, like, the most destructive element of that character, yeah. as far as what he represents in the video yeah. games. But for the sake of this story... It actually does make sense. As, yeah. And then, the movie just completely... They lose control. Itself. Yeah, yeah. Alice dies and is brought back by unseen forces, and un it never makes sense of how they bring her back. Uh, Carlos and Jill, who are wanted by the law and all authority, are just walk up onto re on <laughs> up to Umbrella's front door and take her away. And then they take Alice away because what's his name? Who they replaced because Jason Isaacs was like, "Fuck it, I don't want to be in this movie." He's like, let them go. But in the beginning of the third film, he's trying to fix it, which obviously that no way actually Paul Wes Anderson wrote Paul W. S. Anderson wrote that part into it too. So he wrote himself into a corner. And it he, was really awful. I feel like, you know, all horrible things aside about the film, you can watch it and you can have fun with it for the first three quarters. It's that last quarter where you just uh, like you, I lose it, all it, faith. It's 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 bad. It's, it's bad. It's not a good film. It's not a. But I thought I liked you can, it more. You don't. We saw it you again. don't feel bad watching. Well, actually, no. You do feel bad watching it. But it's not awful to the point where I can't watch it anymore. Like you can finish it. Yeah. Uh, if you've got nothing else to do, which would which, which it's we not did. Norbit. No. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna be really harsh. I'm gonna give Resident Evil Apocalypse a one out of seven. I do not want to watch this movie again. It's even worse than I remembered it. I already didn't like it because I thought it was poorly made. This just cemented my fact of thought for that film. I thought this was good, like my favorite one, my favorite in the whole series. And you know, you're basically is it still. I have to finish what re I know, all which is yeah. funny. Is like I'm actually looking forward to three now. Awkward. Mad Max. Mad Max was zombies. And the funny thing is we watched just a fight scene from it, and even though it's a still a silly fight scene, it's much better shot the, the than editing, this movie. The, the, it's, it's consistent. Cinematography overall. Yeah, way better. better production design. The story is still, you yeah. know. But what would you give this movie now, if now that you know that it's... Going into close. it, I was thinking, okay, three out of seven? Seven, right? Uh, now that we got a chance to really look at it, I'd probably still give it a two. Uh, just because I had enough fun with a lot of those video game references, uh, shot for shot sort of recreations of some scenes from the games, and yeah. some of the characters showing up. And then of some ones. of the f sound effects, too. <laughs> there's, there's you, gotta, you gotta listen for there's it. There's enough yeah. ridiculousness in this yeah. movie that you can enjoy, like when she drives a motorcycle through the glass of this church, they and then it hits a liquor, it. and somehow by hitting a liquor, it goes 90 degrees straight up into the air and explodes. So... <laughs> That was probably the <laughs> crowning moment. That's when yeah. you knew this movie was yeah, off like, the rails. It's like, yep, I know what I'm in for. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you for watching. We'll be doing Resident Evil Extinction, which I cannot believe I actually that. think might be the best one of the first three. This is weird. This is like a terrible Star Wars. Like, like all imagine your imagine if all the Star Wars movies were prequels. Oh, that's just not right. Yeah, that, that, that's what this is like. So you're saying we're going back to the original three, expecting them to be amazing, except it turns out they were also no, prequels. No, 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 no. They all just made them like the prequels. Just a lot of walking and talking? And... Mm. <laughs>
Anyway, guys, that's all from us. We'll, we'll see you next what time with the Resident Evil Extinction review. So, see you guys later. Bye-bye.